Hi everyone. My name is Lacey. Thank you so much for joining me. Today you're joining me for a one hour yoga practice. This practice is gentle. It is meant to be accessible for basically all bodies, uh, prenatal bodies as well. So if you are joining me from home, a few things that you might want to have handy are a blanket or something soft you can use as cushion underneath your knees or a little bit of warmth. Two blocks if you have them, if not, maybe books. If you have a pillow or a cushion, something like that, a bolster maybe if you have it, uh, we'll be using that for our final rest that we're taking. So those are the things that you might want if you have none of those things. Just feel free to get creative with what you do have to work with today. Today's practice will be focusing on open twisting. We'll also be focusing on the area around the belly. We will be getting started in a seat. Before I take my seat, I'll give you a little closer look at the mudra that we'll be working with. We'll be taking what's called Agni Mudra or gesture of fire. So how to take it, you'll take your left hand, palm face up, and then you'll make a thumbs up sign with your right hand. And then this thumb is meant to represent a flame. So once you have that shape with the left palm cradling the right thumb, you'll take it to about the level of your belly. All right, so let's get started. Come into a comfortable seat. So once you arrive into your comfortable seat, one option for that seat is hero's pose or the shape that I'm in. The way that I'm doing it is two blocks stacked onto their lowest setting and then the inner edges of the ankles hugging the outer edges of the blocks. If that doesn't work for your body, you're welcome to sit cross-legged instead. Once you arrive into your comfortable seat, into a seat that feels supportive, into one that you can sustain for a few minutes, we'll take that mudra I mentioned in our hands. So you'll take your left, your right thumb to face up to the ceiling, and then you'll take your left palm to cradle it. You want to take this shape just about above the navel, so what we call in yoga the solar plexus. And then you can close your eyes or soften your gaze. Start to invite your awareness into the body. this area around the belly we say is symbolic of our power and symbolic of light of strength of the fire that burns within us and if we're growing a little human in that space then we might especially feel some kind of glow or maybe it's the imagination of a glow Whatever is happening in your own body, whatever sensation, you might begin to paint the picture of a flame around your belly. Maybe warmth from that flame spreading outward, both up and down the body. Now start to feel your breath. You can begin to watch the belly inflate and deflate and a diaphragmatic breath. Each breath in the belly expands gently, softly. And each exhale, there's a subtle hugging inwards. With that hugging inwards, the muscles around the core, the deep muscles, the transverse abdominis, begin to tone themselves. These deep core muscles are the muscles of our true strength. They are the muscles that keep us supported, that keep us upright. That if we are having a little one, assist in pushing out the baby. So you can release the hands, release the mudra, bring your palms together and just start to rub your palms together, creating a little friction, a little heat. 
a little feeling of fire. Okay, maybe rub a little faster. Once you've built a little warmth, you can release your palms. Oh, hi, Blue. Take your hands to your belly, back to the solar plexus. So right above the navel, right below the bottom ribs. And then watch that diaphragmatic breath once again. Oh, hello. Blue might be joining us, by the way. Maybe close your eyes and maybe allow each inhale to inflate the belly once again. And each exhale to gently deflate to soften. Take a few rounds of breath like that. Oh, Blue, don't eat the flowers. <laughs> yeah. Come here, baby. Good job. And then we'll just begin to accentuate that movement, making a little, making a little noise with our breath. We'll take a shh sound as we exhale. As we do, that shh sound contracts the transverse abdominis, draws the belly in, allows the pelvic floor muscles to lift upwards slightly. So engaging the entire core canister. We'll try it together. Take a breath in, allowing the belly to expand gently, softly. Exhale, shh. Inhale, the belly inflates. Exhale, shh. Notice the space at the bottom when you're empty. Inhaling to inflate. Exhale, shh. Last time, inhale, the belly inflates. Exhale. Good. Release your hands. Blink your eyes open if they're closed. And then if you do have blocks underneath your seat, set them to the top of your mat. Crawl forward into tabletop, taking hands and knees down. As you do, you might take your blanket underneath your knees if you have one. So a little bit of soft cushioning for the knees. Oh, Blue, excuse you. So to come into tabletop, we'll bring the knees underneath the hips, wrists underneath the shoulders. We'll spread through each of the fingers. Know that especially if you are expecting, the joints can tend to be a little more sensitive than normal. So the padding underneath your knees can add a little bit of stability. If it's too much to be on the wrist, you could always take fists instead, or maybe drop down onto forearms. But if it feels okay to stay here where you are, then invite your awareness back into the breath. <laughs> yes, Blue, thanks for that paw. Back into that sense of the belly inflating and drawing in, that motion of the transverse abdominis. Good. Inhale here. Exhale with a shh. Yeah, boo. Inhale. <laughs> Exhale. <laughs> yes, last time like that. Can you do it with me, boo? Inhale. Exhale. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. From your tabletop, extend your left leg back behind you, maybe lifting the foot off the ground. Good. And then feel your belly drawing up and in a sense of the baby lifting up and inwards if you're working with one. Keep your gaze down to the mat, back of the neck stays long. Pause here, allowing the corseting in of the ribs, allowing engagement through the center of the body. Good. And then step your left foot to the outside of both of your hands. You can heel toe your left foot a little bit forward of you. And then maybe you draw your back kneecap slightly backwards so that the weight of your body isn't directly on the kneecap itself. And then from here, ground your right hand either down onto the mat or onto a block. Lift your left arm up to the ceiling, taking an easy twist. Good, feel the shoulders hug inwards. 
allow the wrists to lengthen apart from one another. And in this easy twist, you might even step your left foot out a little wider if you feel like there's the space around the belly is a little cramped. So by taking the foot out wide, you're making space for the belly that might be growing or that just might be there. Take another breath in. As you exhale, lower your left hand back down to the mat. Rather than stepping the left foot all the way back, you'll heel toe the left foot out a little wider. I'm losing where I need to step. To come into gate pose, you'll extend the left leg out to the left. You want your wrists to stay underneath your shoulders. Right knee stays down onto the mat. And then from here, you can keep your right hand grounded onto the mat, reach your left arm up to the ceiling. Taking an open twist, shoulders hug inwards. Yeah, Lou, what's in that blanket? And there is a myth in prenatal that twisting can restrict the movement of the belly, can be bad for the baby in some way. But actually twisting is just one of the, the several muscles or several movements that the spine is able to take and it needs to take on a normal basis. So your body will know, your body will have the wisdom to be able to tell you when a twist becomes too deep. At that point, you don't want to go farther. But practicing these nice wide open twists can be a great opportunity to create space in the body. Good. Take just one more breath in your gate pose. And as you exhale, lower your right hand back down. Step back into table top, taking the hands, the knees back onto the mat. We'll take a cat and cow from here. You can make it shallow, shallow to start. As you inhale, you can feel the shoulders hugging inward. Belly might drop just a touch down to the mat. And then as you exhale, round, round, round your spine. Two more like that. Belly drops just a little. It's already weighted here maybe, so allow it to descend without drawing strain into the low back. And then with your exhalation, round, round, round. Last time into cow pose, shoulders hug in. Exhale to round, round, round. Good, come back into neutral. And then extend your right leg back behind you, maybe lifting the foot off the ground if you have the strength to do so today. If the foot down on the mat is where you need to be, you can stay there. Draw your belly up and in. Feel the core canister hug inward, transverse abdominis engage. And then breathe here, finding your stability, finding your strength. Good. Take another breath in. As you exhale, step the right foot out wide of the hands. Maybe it even comes off the mat if that feels best in the body to do so. For this wide open twist, you might scoot your back kneecap back just a touch. You might walk your left hand a little wider. You might rotate the left fingertips outward towards the long edge of the mat as you reach your right arm up to the ceiling. And if all of that still doesn't feel spacious enough, you could tilt the right kneecap out towards the right side. So really creating space for the middle section of the body. Again, can you let the wrists expand apart from one another? Shoulders to hug inward, spine to rotate. Take another breath. As you exhale, lower your right hand back down. And then heel toe your right foot out so that it comes out to about the same level as your left knee, taking it into gate pose again. So the left knee stays grounded, left palm stays grounded, right leg is extended out long as you reach your right arm up to the ceiling, taking a wide open twist. And then we'll stay here for a breath or two. Notice what feels best in the body here. If it feels best to dip the ear down to the shoulder, you might do that. If it feels best to gaze straight in front of you, your gaze might be there. The eyes might close. As you note the sensation that's happening in your own body. Go ahead, take another breath in. As you exhale, lower the hand back down 
Step your way back to all fours, coming back into tabletop. We'll take another round of cat and cow here. As you inhale, shoulders hug in. As you exhale, round, round, round your spine. Inhale, shoulders hug in. Exhale, round your spine, hugging the belly up and in. Good. And then we'll take a few rounds of thread the needle before coming into our first thread, we'll pulse the movements a few times. So you can start by walking your right hand underneath your nose. Reach your left arm up to the ceiling. Letting your shoulders hug inward. You might rotate your hips open a little. So that again, you're creating more space for the belly to rotate open as well. Good, take a breath in here. As you exhale, you can pulse the left arm underneath your body. We'll reach it straight back up with the breath in lengthening, lifting. Exhale to thread the arm underneath the body. This time we'll hold, lift the left arm up to the ceiling and then thread your left arm all the way underneath your right one. You might crawl your right fingertips out. Your left ear might come down to the mat. Second option, if you have a block, a cushion, a prop handy, you could take a block underneath the left ear. So that's if it doesn't feel so great to take the ear all the way down to the mat. That's just bringing the earth a little closer to us, bringing the support where we need it. To unthread the needle, walk your right hand back to where it started, press into the right hand, lift your left arm up, and then lower the left hand back down to the mat. We'll take that to the second side. Take your left hand underneath your nose, and then inhale the right arm up to the ceiling. Again, your hips might rotate open, rib cage rotates, chest rotates, gaze might lift. Take a breath in here. Exhale to pulse the right arm underneath your body. Inhale, reach the arm back up to the ceiling. Exhale, pulse it through. Last time, reach it up. Exhale, we'll stay here this time. Thread your right arm underneath your body. Crawl your left fingertips out. Either right ear lowers down to the mat or again, if the block underneath the ear felt good in your body, you might take it. Breathe all the way down the spine, into the low back, to the back side of the core. Good, start to unwind, ground through the left hand, reach your right arm back up to the ceiling, and then lower the hand back down to the mat. From here, you're welcome to stay in tabletop for a few breaths, maybe take a few more rounds of cat and cow. Where downward facing dog feels like it's needed in the body today, you might tuck your toes and lift your hips up to the ceiling. Know that whatever I suggest today is always optional. So if this aggravates any dizziness, if you are experiencing heartburn, you might not want to take downward facing dog today. If you are taking it, maybe you take your feet a little wider, maybe mats width apart. So making space for the belly. And then you might gently paddle your knees out. Slowly lower your knees back down to the mat, coming back to all fours. You could stay in tabletop for a few breaths, or you might drop your forearms down to the mat and take a few rounds of cat and cow there. You might take a stretch of the wrists, maybe circling out the hands a few times. Maybe you drop your chin down to your chest. And then let the spine Take a few shallow rounds of movement. Nothing dramatic, nothing major. But just enough 
to create some sensation in the back body and the front body. And then what can you do here in this shape to find a little more ease? And this shape in the birth world is also sometimes called polar bear and it's one to take during labor. And it's those moments in between work, in between muscular engagement, in between effort, that finding ease can be key. Take your time when you're ready, ground back onto all fours, pressing down with your palms. And then from tabletop, we'll extend the left leg back behind us once again, lifting the left foot off the ground. If that feels okay in the body, hug your belly up and in. Maybe stay here or maybe this time you reach your right arm forward, taking it into bird dog. Notice how the transverse abdominis has to continue hugging inward to find stability here, to find strength. Good. And then lower your right hand back down. Step your left foot to the outside of both of your hands. Here it might be handy to have a block or two underneath your hands. This time, we'll tuck the back toe under and lift the back knee. Before you do that, you might take a, a sh breath to lift up. So a little bit of engagement through the transverse abdominis to help you. Take a breath in. Exhale, sh to lift the kneecap off the mat. Good. And then you could stay right here with your hand down onto your block if you need it for stability, or you could climb your left and then your right hand up onto your left thigh. Stabilize here, maybe grounding your hands down onto the thigh. If you need the back heel down to the mat already for support, you're more than welcome to take it. Otherwise, can you create stability in the legs? Maybe your arms reach up overhead. Take a breath in here. As you exhale, we'll take an open twist towards the left side. Your left arm can reach forward, right arm can reach back. Your gaze might travel back over the back hand. We'll take that a few more times. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale to twist. Inhale to lift. Exhale to twist. One last time, inhale to lift. Exhale, this time as you twist, come into warrior two, grounding the back heel down. Arms reach out into a capital T shape. It doesn't have to be the deepest warrior two of your life, but can you make it one that's supportive? So can you feel the strength of your legs here? The sense of the belly drawing inwards. Take your palms to your low belly once again, right above the navel. Notice where your ribs are in space. Your thumbs might be touching your ribs here. There's a tendency in warrior two to have the ribs either forward or back. So can you center them off so that the spine is stacking one vertebra on top of, it, of one another? And then once you're centered, reach your arms back out into a T-shape. Gaze over your left hand, flip the palm, and then lean back into peaceful warrior. Maybe taking your right hand down to your hip as you create this nice movement this nice space through the left side body. Take another breath in. With your exhalation, lower your left forearm down to the left thigh, taking this into side angle. If that's not comfortable to have the left forearm down, you might take the hand down onto the thigh instead, making it a little gentler. I know that you can always straighten the leg out and re-bend into the shape anytime you need a, a little break. If the left forearm is down onto the thigh, you might take your left palm all the way to the belly. You can start with your right hand to your hip and just focus on the strength in the legs first, creating a strong foundation. Feel the breath in your belly. Good, maybe inhaling to inflate. Exhaling with a shh. Inhaling to inflate. Exhaling. 
beautiful. Either stay with the right hand on the hip or reach the right arm up to the ceiling. Either stay or draw the right arm all the way over the right ear, creating space across the right side of the belly this time. Beautiful. Then reach the arm back overhead, palm lifts up to the ceiling, or fingertips lift up rather. Start to straighten off your front leg, maybe climbing the hand up to the thigh, just above the kneecap. So you don't wanna be on the kneecap itself. You might heel toe your back foot in if you don't have a dog underneath you. So take the shape into triangle. And then if you have the space to climb the, the left hand a little lower, you might do so. Maybe you take a block underneath the hand for a little more support. Draw your shoulders in. Let the arms expand. As you create this rotation with the spine, this open twist here. Take a few breaths. Meeting your body where it is. Beautiful. So start to unwind from this shape. Rebend into your front knee. Coming back into warrior two. Grounding down. What are you doing, Blue? Good. Gaze down to your to your left foot. And then you can cartwheel your hands down to the inside of your left foot. Block might come back underneath your hands. Square off your hips to the mat. Lower your right knee down. And then step your left foot back. Coming into tabletop. And then we'll take a round of cat and cow, won't we, Blue? Inhaling, shoulders hugging. Exhaling, rounding, rounding. Good, so finish your last two rounds of cat and cow. And then come back into a neutral spine. Blue might rejoin us a little later. We'll take that same series to our second side. So from your tabletop, reach your right leg back behind you, maybe lifting the toes off the ground. Maybe you stay right there. Maybe the left arm reaches up, finding bird dog. Notice the space around the belly. Let it draw up and inwards. Good. Feel the ribs hugging in. Take another breath in. Lower just your left hand down. Step your right foot to the outside of both of your hands. Take your block underneath your hands if you have it. Maybe taking it down to the medium height to start. Tuck your back toes under, and then we'll use that transverse abdominus engagement to lift the back knee. Take a breath in. Exhale. Beautiful. Use your own strength to climb your right hand and then your left hand up onto your right thigh. Stabilize in any way that you need to, maybe making a little bit of more distance in between the feet, separating them out wider if that's what you need. And then you might reach your arms up to the ceiling once you feel stable in the lower half of the body. Let the fingertips lift. Let the feet ground. If you feel stable here, we'll take a few open twists. If not, maybe your left heel comes down to the mat. Take a breath in. Exhale, reach your left arm back, right arm forward. Inhale, reach back up. Exhale, twist to the left. Inhale, reach back up. Exhale, twist to the left. Last time, reach back up. This time, twist all the way into warrior two. Settling your back heel down to the mat. Spread through all 10 of your toes. Take your hands to your belly right below the ribs so the thumbs can touch the lower ribs. And then notice where your natural tendency is to ground the ribs here. You might shift the ribs slightly backwards, shift them slightly forwards. Just noticing how that might throw the body a little out of alignment. And take your ribs back into center, stacking the spine. Reach your arms into a T. Flip your right palm to the ceiling. Lean into peaceful warrior, maybe taking your left hand to your left hip. Ground through your right heel. And let the right side body lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Breathing down into the right side of the belly. 
Take another breath in. As you exhale, we'll take it into side angle, maybe taking the hand, maybe the right forearm down to the thigh. Keep your left hand on your hip, and then maybe the right hand comes to the belly if the forearm is down. Good. And then in this shape, can you breathe down into the belly? Letting the ribs expand as you breathe in. And then letting them soften as you exhale. Take a few breaths. Feeling the gentle movement around the abdomen. And one more inhale. Exhale. Good. To take this shape into triangle, trikonasana, you can take your right hand down to the thigh, start to straighten off the right leg. Hinge your upper body forwards as the hips draw backwards. And then if this feels like too wide of a stance, maybe you heel toe your back foot in. Maybe you stay with the right hand above the kneecap, or maybe it crawls down to the shin. Maybe a block meets your hand. And then if you feel stable with the lower half of the body, the left arm might reach upwards. Let your shoulders hug back inwards. Breathing down the body. Breathing into the belly. Because we didn't do it in side angle, we'll take it here. You might start to draw the left arm overhead, getting that nice extension through the left side body. So draw the arm back upwards. Rebend into your right knee. Stand into your warrior two shape. Bring power down into the legs. Good. Cartwheel your hands down to your block if you have it. Square off your hips to the mat. Lift your back heel up and then lower your left knee down. Step your right foot back. Walk your hands down to the mat. Maybe the forearms come all the way down. Drop your chin down to your chest. Maybe a few rounds of cat and cow here. And again, allowing the body to soften in between the effort. Knowing that being able to do so is a skill. And that these gentle moments of softness we take in between work are just as important as the work itself. Good. Climb your hands right and then left back onto the mat. We'll take another downward facing dog and we'll come up to standing through it. If that doesn't work, you can come up to stand in any way that works for your body today. So if you're coming into down dog, tuck your toes, lift your hips. Walk your hands to your feet, coming into the fold, a fold at the back of your mat. Heel toe your feet to their mats width apart, bend your knees, and then walk your left and then right forearm up onto your thighs. Good, from there, moving slowly, especially if you experience any dizziness at this point in your, pre in your pregnancy or just in your life in general. Press your left and then right hand into the thighs and then press into your feet to come to stand all the way up. Good. From standing, we'll take chair pose. Before we do, just make sure your mat is cleared of all props. So blanket can come off to the side if you were using it. Take a block, take it in between your thighs, taking it to the skinniest width, as close to the pubic bone as you can take it. Spread through each of your toes, and then take a bend of your knees. You can either reach your arms forward of you, or maybe they come up if that feels okay for the shoulders. Spread through each of your toes and hug the block inwards. Feeling the adductors light up. Feeling the thighs engage. And can you stay here and breathe? Chair pose is also known as fierce pose. Notice if taking that word with the shape 
can bring you any more strength. Maybe using the word as a mantra if you need it, to stay here to breathe. Good, take another breath in. As you exhale, stand into your feet. We'll just take that one more time. Spread your toes a little wider. Position your feet maybe a little closer if you need to, to ground the block in firmly in between the thighs. And then bend your knees, reach your arms, either upward or maybe forward. Coming into Utkatasana, fierce pose, chair pose. There's a tendency here, especially in pregnancy, to dump the belly forward, to have a little arch in the low back because the weight of the belly draws us forward. So can you counter that by tucking your pubic bone just gently upward so the pelvis still stays neutral, low back still stays neutral? Good. Finding the belly line up once again, allowing that strength of the belly to create strength all the way down the body. Two more breaths here. One more breath in. As you exhale, stand into your feet, coming into your mountain. Set your block aside. You can set your two blocks back up to the front of the mat. We won't be using them for, actually, we will use one block. So do take one block in your hands, set it to the long edge of your mat, and then step your feet out so that your Ankles line up just about underneath your wrists. Draw your heels in, your toes out, and then bend at your knees to come down into goddess pose, also known as powerful pose. Take your hands behind the outer edges of the thighs and gently press the thighs into the hands, creating a lock, a seal, a bit of engagement. This time the outer portion of the legs, the abductors are working a little more. We need both of them to stay strong. So from here, you can either stay with your hands here, reminding yourself to continue engaging through the outer line of the legs, or you could draw your arms into a cactus shape. Good. Maybe you close your eyes. Maybe you take your hips just about two inches lower. And since this shape is also called powerful pose, maybe you use that as a mantra here. As a reminder to stay strong, to stay stable. Find the belly, hug it just gently inwards. Find the tailbone, allow it to go downwards. Three more breaths. One more breath in. As you exhale, stand into your feet. Draw your toes to face forward towards the long edge of your mat. Take your hands onto your hips. Lift your heart. And then start to lower, lower, lower your chest slowly, slowly, slowly. Walk your hands onto your block. Maybe taking the block to the medium height. You might Stay with the spine long and more of a flat back if you are feeling any dizziness, any heartburn today. If it feels okay to dip the chin down to the chest, that's another option. Third option is to come into almost a downward facing dog, a wide legged downward facing dog by crawling either your hands or your block forward. And then drawing the hips backwards. Allowing the back to lengthen. You could also have two blocks underneath your hands for this shape if that feels more stable. Breathe into the body. Good, and then if you're in that downward dog, that wide leg downward facing dog variation, lift your head back up. Walk your block. A little closer to your body so that the block comes about underneath your nose and it doesn't matter what height you take the block maybe take it on the medium to start ground your right palm down onto the block and then let your left arm reach out to the ceiling taking a twist here if it feels better to do so you might invite a gentle bend 
into the left knee. If that causes any discomfort in the knee, you don't have to take it. Again, this doesn't have to be the deepest twists. Know where the limitations of your body are. Or ask your body where they are. Take another breath in. As you exhale, lower the left hand back down. Maybe there's a subtle bend into the left knee as the right arm reaches up. Taking your twist. Good, take another breath in. Exhale to lower the hand back down to the block. Take your hands back to your hips, lengthen through your spine, finding a flat back, and then bend your knees. Coming through goddess, we come all the way up to stand. Good. And then you can heel toe your feet back together. Taking them about hips width, maybe a little wider. Again, making space for the belly. Reach your arms up. Exhale to fold over your legs. Crawl your way out into tabletop here, taking your hands, your knees onto the mat. Maybe take one more cat and cow. Maybe the forearms drop down if that feels best in the body. Just finding a few moments of ease. Good. And then from here, we'll come into Anahata Asana or Puppy Dog Pose, taking a gentle back bend. If you need your blanket underneath your knees for support, you could take that. You can walk your hands forward. And then let your forehead ground down to the mat. You want your lower half of the body to stay in tabletop more or less, so hips stacked right over the knees as the upper body comes into more of a down dog shape. And if it doesn't feel good to lower the forehead all the way down, maybe there's a block underneath the forehead, bringing the support of the earth a little closer to you. Notice, can you keep hugging the belly just gently inwards so that rather than crunching into the low back, there's stability. Good, and then slowly, slowly come into child's pose from your puppy. Widen the knees a touch. Sink your hips to your heels. Your block might Stay underneath the forehead. It might come a little closer to you. Knees are wide, so the belly has room to inflate and deflate without any sense of compression. And can you feel those diaphragmatic breaths once again? Belly expanding through 60 degrees with each inhale. Softening with each exhalation. And then slowly begin to crawl your spine back upright. We'll extend the legs forward of us. With your legs extended forward. Give your knees a pedal out. Take your blanket if you have it. We'll set it down underneath the hips. Underneath the sits bones. As we set up for another twist. Extend your right leg forward. And then the left foot can either step to the outside of the foot if that feels more spacious for the belly, or it could step to the, or step to the outside or to the inside rather. So whatever creates the most space for the belly, one, or if this feels good to take the foot to the outside, that's okay. Tinge your right fingers into the mat behind you. Reach your left arm overhead, and then we'll take an open twist. So we're twisting over towards the right side. Draw your elbow to the inside of the knee, and gently press 
the knee into the elbow. So feeling a little sense of engagement through the adductors once again. The muscles that keep the leg stabilized and works. The cervical spine might twist as well, so you might take your gaze over your back shoulder. If that feels okay for the neck, but if anything is funky happening in the neck, your gaze might be more centered forward. Good, and then slowly, slowly unwind the upper body back through center. Step your left foot back down. Send it forward. Give your knees another tap out. Good. And we'll take this twist to the second side. So you can step your right foot either to the outside of the leg or if it feels better for the belly, to the inside. Tint your left fingers into the mat. Reach your right arm up to the ceiling. Lengthening, lengthening upward. From this length, rotate the upper body. Elbow to the inside of the knee. Shoulders draw in as your heart moves backwards. Your gaze might come over the left shoulder. And you keep breathing down into the belly. So if the foot to the outside of the leg doesn't allow for that diaphragmatic breathing, then maybe the foot comes a little wider. Maybe you play with that variation if you've never taken it before. So that we still have the integrity of the breath. Start to unwind the upper body. Extend your right leg back forward. Give your knees another tap, tap, tap out. We will set up for a supine twist here, lying on our backs. If it doesn't feel good to lie directly onto your back, you could take that same upright twist that I just cued you in. You could take it another time. We won't be down here for too, too long, but do have your blocks, your blanket cushion if you have it handy alongside you. So come down to your back, draw your knees over to the left, walk your hands down to the mat to come down onto your left side and then you can roll onto center on your back. And draw your knees towards your armpits, taking them wide. Take your hands to cap onto the kneecaps, to cup onto the kneecaps. And gently rock your knees a little side to side. From here, take your feet about mats width apart. Draw your arms into a cactus shape. And then soften your knees down to the left side. The legs could be apart or they could come to stack one on top of the other. Have your knees towards the bottom corner of the mat so that this is a gentle twist for the body. And then do support your knees if you have something to take underneath them to make this shape a little gentler. So maybe block, blanket, cushion, anything that you have handy. And lifting the earth a little closer towards your body. Taking a very gentle supine twist. Your head might turn. The gaze might come over the right shoulder. And let yourself ground, let yourself breathe. Slowly draw the knees back through center. Take the feet out mat width again. You can keep your arms in this goalpost shape as you draw your hips over to the left side, knees over to the right. Legs might stack and they might come down towards the bottom corner of your mat. You might take a block onto its lowest, medium, highest height. Setting up for a very gentle supine twist. Gaze might come over the left shoulder. Invite your mind's eye into the space around the belly again. If this feels like too much of a twist, how can you ease out of it just gently? How can you make it a twist that serves you where you are? No compression. No sense of pain. No 
sense of sharpness. Those are all indications to find something there. Slowly draw your knees back through center. Take your gaze to the left, move your hips to the right. Move your knees to the left and then roll onto your left side. From here, climb your way all the way up to a seat. Moving slowly, slowly. We will set up for a variation of deer pose. It's one last twist. So to take it, you will need your blocks for this and you'll want a bolster if you have it. We'll set up a little ramp for the bolster and we'll be using this for our final rest as well. So we'll be in a good position to take that when the time is here. Have your blocks, one onto the medium height, one right in front of it onto the lowest height. And take your bolster and then create a ramp. So there's a nice slope supported by the blocks. And then lower your left hip down to the edge of your bolster. Stack your shins one on top of the other. And then we'll start very gentle here. We'll start with more of a side bending variation. And you have the option to take this a little deeper if you choose. So you can lower your left arm down to the bolster. And lower your left ear down to the arm. And then you can reach your right arm overhead. Maybe clasp your left fingers around the right wrist and give it a gentle tug. You might stay here with the side bending variation or you might take a little more of a twist, walking your right hand down to the mat, walking your left hand down to the mat. Belly's still to the, it's not squared onto the bolster so the belly still has space as you lower your left ear down to the bolster. And then you might even play with threading your hands through the bolster. And let your body begin to soften here as you hold on to the prop that you're touching. Line, take your hands back down to the mat. Use the strength of your arms to lift your way back up. We'll take this to the second side. So you can transition through tabletop, bring your hips to square over the bolster. Maybe you take around a cat and cow in between sides, or maybe you're just ready to take that second side, lowering the right hip to the edge of the bolster. You can start with that side bending variation, maybe taking your right arm down, right ear to the right arm. Legs can stack more or less one on top of the other. You might reach your left arm overhead. Use your right hand around the left wrist, give it a gentle tug. Breathing into the left side. Maybe you stick with that, or maybe you walk your left hand down, right hand down to the mat. The right ear could come to the right side of your bolster. You want to maintain that space for the belly, dialing the belly over towards the left side, rather than squared into the bolster. And maybe you give the bolster a hug, taking your hands, threading them through the bolster, underneath them. Continue to practice softly. Knowing that that flicker of the flame within you is still there, is still glowing. Can you soften around it?
And if you prefer to lie on one side or the other for Shavasana, you might just stay on your ramp or come down to the mat. So take a sideline variation of Shavasana. And if it feels okay for the body, then so take a gentle heart opener with Shavasana. You can roll your way to center so that your back lines up with the bolster. If you have a blanket handy, you might take it over the belly, over the hips, bringing a little warmth. Shoulders can draw in, palms can face upwards. You can rest here. If that doesn't feel comfortable, you're welcome to change the shape. If there is a final fidget, a final movement, anything at all that your body needs before taking rest, you can invite those small movements. But once rest calls your body, calls to your mind, can you give for yourself those moments of space? As we're transitioning towards Shavasana, I'll read a poem called Fire by Judy Brown. What makes a fire burn is a space between the logs, a breathing space, too much of a good thing, too many logs, packed too tight, can douse the flames almost as surely as a pail of water would. So building fires requires attention to the spaces in between, as much as to the wood. When we are able to build open spaces in the same way that we have learned to pile on the logs, then we can see how it is fuel or the absence of fuel together that make the fire possible. We only need to lay a log lightly from time to time. The fire grows simply because the space is there with openings in which the flame that knows just how it wants to burn can find its own way. Take a final breath in where you are. Soft sigh out. Shavasana.
and you're welcome to stay in your rest for longer. And then when your body invites you to unwind from rest, you can begin to bring intuitive movements back. Maybe bringing the wiggle down to the fingers and toes. And from wherever you are, if you are on your back in some way or on your side, we'll all meet on our side. If you're already seated, you can stay there. From your side, you can use the strength of your arms to transition back up to a seat. Climbing up to a tall spine. Join your palms together at the center of your heart. Start to create a little heat, a little friction with your hands, rolling your palms back and forth, back and forth. So you've acquired a little heat. Release your hands to your belly, just below the ribs above the navel. Imagine the, imagine the flame within. Take a breath into your belly. Soft, clearing sigh out. Join your palms back into prayer. Take it to the center of your forehead. Bow your chin down to your chest. With gratitude for each of us who practice for this virtual space that we have. Thank you all so much for joining me for practice. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.